Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Thomas D, Jesse C, and David C. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Again, apologies for Friday. That was definitely not enjoyable. I appreciate all of you that left a positive comment over on the community tab. And for all future channel updates, don't forget, check the community tab if you're wondering what's going on. We have a lot of ground to cover today, so we're going to go quickly. First, I want to touch on the price reduction rumors in China. Some people are saying that Tesla could reduce prices another 15% in China. Just showing you since the beginning of 2021, Tesla prices are still up about 5% across the board in China. So if this hypothetical rumor proves true, Tesla vehicles would still only be down around 10% on average across the board since the beginning of 2021. And further, right now, prices in China for the same vehicle are already on average about 25% cheaper than the US models. So an additional 15% price cut in China would take this difference to about 40%. So I do think 15% feels a little aggressive. However, as I've said before, I will not at all be surprised by further price cuts from Tesla in China. There's a lot of competition. We're entering a global recession if we're not already in one. Ultimately, it's just the season that we're in right now. And again, if Tesla's margins are being compressed, well, you can guarantee it's happening to other automakers as well, and probably to a worse degree. Personally, I won't be surprised at all if Tesla's auto gross margins go down to 23 or 25% at some point in 2023, given everything going on globally. It's just a very difficult time. It really just boils down to, I have faith in Elon and the team to execute and navigate these choppy waters. So just a warning, if this next round of Tesla China price cuts comes to fruition, the media is going to blow it out of proportion, but from a long-term perspective, it's really not a big deal at all and should be expected in these conditions. And in case you see anyone mentioning that Tesla might export cars from China to the United States, just know that at least for now, Elon said that is false. I also want to touch on this news that I think got blown out of proportion, most likely due to a slightly misleading title, all that's really going on here, Tesla is cutting back on installing the solar roof on its own. Now they're going to basically hire that out to third party professionals to install it. So basically Tesla can focus on the products themselves. I have to say for the customers that had their solar projects canceled after being past the design and permitting phase and had been waiting, it's not a good look for Tesla to cancel at this point. In my opinion, Tesla should have followed through with those orders. This shouldn't be a major surprise as we've been told all year Tesla has been having challenges with installing these solar roofs. House to house, there's just so much complexity. It's very different from one case to the next. So for Tesla to learn this on the fly, it's really just easier to hire that out to professional installers. Simply put, this is just a case of Tesla running into the limits of vertical integration. There are many places where doing that makes a lot of sense, but there are some other instances like this where it's best to just let the professionals handle it. Tesla has already spent years developing its own in-house products, the solar roof, Tesla Powerwall. Yes, Tesla does have its own inverter as well. So to think that they're just going to scrap all of those years of work when the future is still very clearly going to be solar energy stored in batteries, plus we have huge incentives coming from the solar tax credit in the Inflation Reduction Act, maybe for around the next decade. So Tesla will definitely still press ahead with these solar products. It's just the installation will be passed off to the pros. I do think it's worth mentioning, Elon originally put out a goal that Tesla wanted to install around 1,000 solar roofs per week. Fast forward to today, and we're probably sitting in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 per week. So it could be another two to three years before the Tesla solar roof really hits that goal that Elon had set. And it's just gonna take time to figure out how to get these installed efficiently and quickly. Elon gave a quick talk at the G20 summit right before the interview, his power went out. So he spoke via candlelight, which was kind of funny, but here's what he said when asked about a more affordable Tesla. I can't, you know, I can't speak too much about the future Tesla product development, except to say that we do think that making a much more affordable vehicle would make a lot of sense and we should do such a thing. He was also asked how he's navigating through everything that he has going on right now. I have to say, it's with great difficulty. Uh, I mean, I'm really working at the absolute most amount that I can work from morning till night, seven days a week. Um, so this is not something I'd recommend, frankly. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know what else to say. So hopefully he can move quickly at Twitter, get it on the right path, and then pull back a little bit. Shifting gears to FSD version 11, which is supposed to be the single stack architecture. Elon said, given all that is in B11, it'll take a few weeks to expand the beta, then another few weeks to go wide release to the US and Canada. Elon was asked if it'll include actually smart summon. He didn't really answer directly. He said, going without saying that we all want ASS, actually smart summon ASAP. Then he said the rollout will broaden roughly every week. And it looks like FSD V11 rolled out at 11.11 11 p.m. Pacific time on November 11th. Here's the one release note I want to cover from V11, enabled FSD beta on the highway. This unifies the vision in planning stack on and off the highway and replaces the legacy highway stack, which is over four years old, confirmation of the single stack. The legacy highway stack still relies on several single camera and single frame networks and was set up to handle simple lane specific maneuvers. FSD Beta's multi-camera video networks and next-gen planner that allows for more complex agent interactions with less reliance on lanes, make way for adding more intelligent behaviors, smoother control, and better decision making. In case you want to see the rest of the release notes, here they are on the screen. Go ahead and pause. The two questions now are how will the FSD code replacing the autopilot code that was active on the highways actually work in the real world? And two, will there be an update for parking lots with this new version 11? Of course, we only have a few weeks left in 2022, so for Elon to hit his goal of wide release for FSD beta to anybody that wants it in North America, at least the US and Canada, this seems like the version that could be the one. The Verge got its hands on a recording of Elon Musk in a meeting with Twitter employees, but we actually learned some things about Tesla. Elon was asked about attrition at Twitter, to which he said, if you look at, say, the Tesla Autopilot AI team, it's about 150 engineers, and they're outperforming teams that they're competing against that are 3,000 engineers. I'm a big believer that a small number of exceptional people can be highly motivated and can do better than a large number of people who are pretty good and moderately motivated. Elon applies this philosophy to all of his companies, and he said, those who go hardcore and play to win, Twitter is a good place. Those who are not totally understand, but then Twitter is not for you. I would argue you could insert Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, Boring, whichever one of Elon's projects into that spot for Twitter. Regarding Elon selling Tesla stock recently, he said, the reason I did that was to save Twitter, not because I lack faith in Tesla. I think Tesla stock is going to be worth an immense amount in the future. I sold the stock for Twitter to keep Twitter alive. And the reason that we are going hardcore with subscribers is to keep Twitter alive. Elon also talked about having PTSD from recessions in the past, so he's clearly prepared for this moment. He said, it's worth remembering that in 2009, GM and Chrysler both went bankrupt. Tesla did not, despite being a startup EV company. And finally, Elon said, at Tesla, we do no market surveys, no market testing. We just make cars that we love and that we are convinced people will love. That's it. And Tesla outsells everyone. Tesla outsells all the people that are focused on the metrics, all the people that do the market surveys, outsells all of them because we focus on making the product amazing and that's what matters. One of the biggest news stories over the weekend was Tesla officially opening up its charging cable and port to the public. Previously, it was kind of open, now it is officially open. And Tesla is now labeling its proprietary cable and connector as the North American charging standard, which we'll call the NAX. In North America, NAX vehicles outnumber CCS two to one and Tesla's supercharging network has 60% more NAX posts than all the CCS equipped networks combined. Tesla did say there are already network operators with plans in motion to incorporate NACs at their chargers, so Tesla owners can look forward to charging at other networks without adapters. Before getting into any of these debates, the NACs standard is smaller, faster, cheaper, more reliable, and more ubiquitous than the competing options, especially in North America. I think the door has closed for any hope of a global charging standard. Asia has its own, Europe has its own version of CCS, North America has a different version of CCS that by the way is not compatible with that European version. So at this point, the best path forward seems like continent specific charging standards. Right now, my three most pressing questions. Will there be a fee to use this? What will the market response and adoption ultimately look like? And is it too late? Are we too far down the path with CCS in North America? Or will some OEMs and network operators change it up and start implementing the new NACS standard? 
The truth is one of the main competitors to NACS is Electrify America and the problems of this network have been well documented over the years. And it's a fair question to ask, will Electrify America be incentivized to fix this charging network because the only reason it exists in the first place was because of the Dieselgate scandal. And finally, I would love to know what the government thinks of this new name, the North American Charging Standard. It sounds very official, makes you think that the government was involved to some degree, but right now that seems unlikely. We do know with the Inflation Reduction Act for companies to get funding for charging, they have to be open source, check, but they're also requiring stations to have CCS connectors. So my question is, will the government switch up their stance and change this based on what Tesla has done? Now we just have to wait and see. I'll put this official document below, but I just wanna highlight two quick things. On page 11, it says the North American charging standard is compatible with vehicle to X, like vehicle to load, vehicle to home, and vehicle to grid power transfer. On page 21, we get a 500 volt configuration as well as a 1000 volt configuration. And on page 26, Tesla has successfully operated the NACs above 900 amps continuously with a non-liquid cooled vehicle inlet. Just to be clear, they're talking about a non-liquid cooled inlet, meaning the port on the car, not the actual cable, because the cables are actually liquid cooled, at least most of the newer ones. Using that data, 900 amps times 1000 volts is 900,000 watts or 900 kilowatts. Before we get crazy, this is more for future products and future updates as some older vehicles aren't even able to handle charging rates up to these speeds. And further, the peak charging rate is not what's important it's all about the charging curve and then these are really just specs we have to wait and see what this looks like in real world testing however with all of that said i'm sharing this because we know that tesla semi should use a different charging standard the mcs so having this type of capability built into future chargers presumably superchargers means maybe cybertruck goes to 800 volts or maybe there are no plans to do that and tesla is just future proofing so the charging landscape is usually pretty boring, but right now it's actually very exciting. From Reuters, on November 5th in China, there was a Model Y that got into an accident and it killed two people. Now there's a ton of wild speculation online, getting back to unintended acceleration. And Tesla said, police are currently seeking a third party appraisal agency to identify the truth behind the accident. And we will actively provide any necessary assistance, cautioning against believing rumors. Don't forget, NHTSA already investigated these unintended acceleration claims of Tesla vehicles and concluded that it was always driver error, nothing to do with a Tesla manufacturing defect. And I'm not at all saying I think this is what happened, but I saw it and it's just more of a PSA for everyone in general. Jason Hughes did a great thread on why these unintended acceleration claims are bogus. It'll be linked below if you want to check it out. Just a quick one, Elon replied to Leo Koguan with regards to a Tesla stock buyback and he said this is up to the Tesla board. As if Elon wasn't busy enough already, this week he starts his defense of his 2018 CEO compensation pay package in court. Here we have GM planning to tell investors the company expects its EV program to be profitable by 2025. GM will host its investor day November 17th, Thursday of this week. GM has said the Altium batteries will be 60% cheaper to build than the Chevy Bolt's battery, and they're already working on a second generation Altium battery, which goes into production in the next few years, which is expected to drop costs another 40%. So it's great to make all of these promises, but as we've seen from Tesla's 4680s, it's much harder to execute in the real world. And I can't believe we still have analysts saying this. David Whiston from Morningstar said, if Tesla can do it, there's no reason GM, Ford, and others can't do it. They're just behind on product lineup and manufacturing. If you've been watching Electrify regularly now for any amount of time, you know that this is a horrific take. Tesla said it will double its investment and future plans in the Chinese market. The Chinese EV market is booming and becoming increasingly attractive to EV makers, said Tesla's VP of Foreign Affairs, Grace Tao. Say what you will about political tensions, but the Chinese EV market is way too good for any manufacturer to ignore. Had to show you this data from the California New Car Dealer Association, data for the first nine months of the year. The Model 3, the number one top-selling passenger car, ahead of 
of the Toyota Camry. And we have the Model Y in the top spot for the top selling light trucks ahead of the Toyota RAV4. Check this out. Jeff Bezos just said he's going to donate most of his fortune to charity. However, I'm sharing this because although he did not provide specific details, the funds will go towards efforts to combat climate change and support humanity's unification. I wouldn't mind seeing a nice chunk of this $124 billion net worth going into Tesla stock. And last up for today, Amazon is set to lay off 10,000 employees, which would be the largest layoff in company history. This move will primarily impact Amazon's devices organization. That'll do it for today. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.